So, are we going anywhere this week? Hmm. Dylan's downstairs with mommy at the uh, grocery store. Well, I'll answer that question. Yes, we're gonna go to Japan again. I'm turning Japanese, I think I'm turning Japanese, I really think so. A lot of our lenses come from Japan, so no great surprise. But what are we looking at this week? Another vintage lens from Canon. That's right. Canon made some killer lenses back in the uh, back in the 1970s and like the game off! so on. But uh, this one in particular is an FD mount. Um, they're not really sure what the, the FD stands for, but they're guessing maybe the dual linkage is the D part. Um, it is an FD. Now it's a new FD. FD. 24 millimeter 2.0 yes! that's right 2.0 it's not quite the 24 1.4 l lens but hey it's nowhere near the uh the size and nowhere near the cost either so it's the next best thing and it is pretty good for the next best thing but how good well why don't we figure it out together right so grab yourself something to eat or drink get yourself comfortable drink the kool-aid Let's get it on. Here I am, BNL. Green is always coming down. This is Camera Talk with Dr. Scott and his little co host Dylan, who's at the supermarket with mommy. Oh. And should be back any minute. And then he can join us for camera talk. Anyway, let's get a head start. So what are we looking at this week? Well, just as the intro said, we're looking at another classic vintage lens from Canon. That's right. One of Canon's FD mounts. Now, uh, for those who know anything about FD or the FL or the R, you know, the, the FL replaced the R mount and the FD replaced the FL mount. It's almost like a biblical thing of this begat that and this begat this. I have the light! Anyway, 1971 is when the FD mount came into existence. And throughout the 20 some odd years of the FD being around, there were like 200 and, was it 130 or 230? Forget the number escapes my uh, my mind at the moment but it's a large amount a large number of lenses that were released in that uh, in that period now the one we're looking at today is a 24 millimeter f2 now it's an fd mount but it's another version that's right not virgin you must tie her down on a bed and spank her. Version of the FD mount, and because it was new at the time, they call it the new FD mount, and it took over, you know, the lineup in 1979. 1979. You know, there were a number of, um, I guess, benefits you would say for the new FD or the NFD uh, as, it's, as it's known as. Um, one is it shortened the barrel length. You know, if you compare the two, you know, uh, uh, an FD mount versus an NFD mount lens, they are significantly shorter. That's how you use it. So they shortened the barrel length, they reduced the size of the front element, um, again, trying to be more compact. They move the aperture diaphragm further up the, uh, um, the barrel. So again, it, it helped to, to shorten and make the, uh, the whole thing compact. Um, and they added a floating element group into the design as well, which again helped with the close focus performance so those are some those are some pretty good uh pretty good improvements to the to the already good design 
that uh, that Canon had out there. Now, um, you know, uh, along along with that, you know, the image quality, at for the, especially for the time, was very respectable. I mean, everybody was like, "Wow, these are some pretty nice lenses." And there's there's people out there who are original owners of these things that bought them back in the '70s and still use them today. At least we're not fucking idiots. Uh, because they're pretty good quality. Now, wide open, just like a lot of vintage lenses, wide open, this lens, the 24 f2, is not killer sharp, you know. But at 2.8, just moving up, uh, you know, a stop, it, uh, it does sharpen up. And really like most, again, of these older lenses, f4 to f8 in that range is where it's really sharp, sharp. Now, that's, if that's what you're looking for, then obviously you want to stop down on these things. But if you want, uh, again, a vintage look with some nice bokeh. Rich, smooth, buttery bokeh. Uh, you know, it's got decent bokeh at F2. You know, the, the blades are, you know, um, relatively roundish. So it, it keeps the, uh, the bokeh balls round, and we like our balls round, right? Say everybody haven't seen my balls. But, you know, again, because it is an older lens, the, 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 uh, the coatings, which it had the, the typical Canon coating, the SSC, Super Spectra coating, um, which was, you know, printed on all their FD lenses until the new FD, and then they removed that from, from the uh, faceplate. But it still has the same coating, though. They just, they just figure out, hey, everybody's so used to SSC now, we don't even need to advertise it anymore because it's just come to be expected as this is the coating that's on on the lens now as i said it will it will flare under the right conditions you know um and it's kind of odd too it, it flares actually more when you stop down to like 2.8 deal with it okay and you're welcome f2 it'll flare a little bit a little bit here and there but at 2.8 it, it flares a little more Kind of thing uh, in, in that regard, and I guess the other negative may be the uh, wide open again vignetting, which is again typical for uh, you know a lot of uh, a lot of lenses when they're when they're wide open. So nothing nothing uh, surprising there. They're very sought after by uh, video uh, video uh, videographers out there. The um, you know the tones and the the color renditions and everything are very Canon FD-ish, I would say. What the fuck is that? If I can call it that. Uh, there's kind of a green little tone to everything using, using this lens. It's what I've noticed anyway. Um, so, altogether, you know, the, the build quality um, is getting closer to what you know what we expect from from a Canon lens, which is kind of plasticky. Ew! The EF mount, which came after this one, uh, for the EOS system, was a little uh, a little plasticky, like this one was, versus the regular FD or the last FD designs were more definitely more metal. They had chrome. There was a, the first versions were. Uh, um, they had a chrome ring around them, so they called them the chrome nose. But anyway, the, the build quality is still decent. The aperture uh, aperture setting is um, um, clicked, the aperture ring itself. Now, again, they moved the aperture ring further towards the, the, the uh, bottom of the, of the barrel, and that was to accommodate the camera that these were designed for, which is the F1. Ah. Um, so that when you're looking through um, the uh, optical viewfinder, remember it used a prism uh, to look through. You could actually see the you could actually see the uh, um, the aperture ring on it, so that you know you could see which which aperture setting you're at. So that was you know again another. Another design consideration um, they added to it. Now it's a uh, it's got a 180 degree focus throw on it. So 
uh, pretty good for, for, again, manual focus. It goes from F2 to F22. Now, of course, I shouldn't be using it at F22 anyway due to diffraction. But, um, but overall, you know, it's smooth, again, for, for something of its age. I mean, it's the uh, focus ring has got a little play to it. Um, that could probably be tightened up somewhere in there, but... It actually really, really sucks. You know, for obviously video shooters, this particular model or this particular sample would not be ideal for you because of that. But I'm not using it to, to shoot movies. If I do use it, which I do, which I have. English, motherfucker, do you speak it? Uh, in the past, if I'm using my Canon M50, which I use to, to record these YouTube videos, if I'm using that as my sample camera, you know, to use, um, to show you guys stuff, I'll use this camera as my, or maybe my AR2 or something. Um, my other cameras to, uh, to film the video and I'll use this lens as my, as my video lens, but I'm not focusing in and out. I just hit a focus because I'm not moving anywhere. And, uh, so it's on a tripod, no big deal. But if you're shooting moving objects or you're zooming in or focusing in and stuff on that, that may be a, a showstopper for you. Um, unless you have another soundtrack and you won't hear it anyway, but eh, that's another story. What the fuck? Anyway, um, well, what I, can, what I can do for you here, um, well, before I do that, let's talk about the specs. On this thing it's um, 11 elements in nine groups so there's a lot of glass in here but it's not heavy uh, well it's not super heavy it's close focus uh, it's 30 centimeters so that's that's not bad you know you can get in fairly close to something it has eight blades as I've uh, as I've said before um, and they're they're curved so they keep the bokeh balls relatively round as you're stopping down and um, 285 grams. So again, it's it's not super light, but it's not super heavy either. It's kind of in that range, but it's got a lot of, lot of glass in it. So anyway, that's the, the specs on this thing. But as I said, for performance-wise, um, what I normally do is get a shot of the Canon M50 Yay! that I use to record these, uh, these um, YouTube videos. And what I do, well, before I do that, I should, I should change my steady shot here to help with some stabilization so it's not shaky. Change that to 24. All right, oh, much smoother. All right, so what I do is I focus in on my Canon M50 kit lens, which is uh, on the camera now, and in, and I try to focus as best I can on the 15 to 45 EFM lens, the writing on the nameplate to see how, how sharp I can get that. So let's do that. Oh, and as you can hear, Dylan and mommy are back home. So Dylan, one, two, three. There we go. So that was at F. <laughs> Uh, apparently my wife wants in since Dylan came in and locked the door. Way to go. Back in a second. So they're out there making all kinds of noise and everything else while we're in here making a YouTube video. Okay, so where was I? So let's get to... Uh, hold on, let me boost my ISO here. So that we can get a better, a better look at this at five. This so this is at five point six. Um, all right, you ready? One, two, three. All right. So that was at f two and at f five point six. What do you think? Looks good, huh? So, with that said, and some real-world samples, of course, we always get a shot of Dylan. 
because uh, Dylan's my little model. He's free, and sometimes he's cooperative. Uh, other times, most of the time, he's not. Ah, fuck I have to fight with him to try to get pictures. But anyway, here's Dylan at F2. Dylan at f 5.6. Okay, so what do you think? Looking good? Looks like a decent, decent lens to use as a, as an all around kind of lens, right? It's okay for portraits. It's okay for landscape and architecture. It's okay for a number of different things. So it's a, uh, hey, it's a nice all around lens. So anyway, um, and how about some, you know, random uh, shots using this lens for various other things, outdoor things, trees and lakes and butterflies and flowers and other little children other than Dylan. What the fuck is that? Other people, dogs, cats, you name it, here's the random stuff. So what do you think about that? Looked okay, right? Okay, so, um, what do you say? What do you know? What do you say? I think that's about it. That's all I wanted to really, really wanted to say about that. Comes with a, uh, one of those pedal design hoods, to which I don't have for it. Um, luckily these all have threaded, uh, threaded fronts for filters, which I can also screw in a, uh, a uh, hood if I wanted one on there which I would recommend if you don't want that flaring in there or use an FD filter on the two. Anyhow, so um, with that said, I think, uh, can I recommend it? Yes. Yes! You know, it's, uh, again, it's a great classic vintage lens. Um, other than that, I do believe that's all I wanted to say. I can't remember. Well, how about we give our little plug for the uh, photo editing software that I use, which is Luminar. That's right, Luminar Neo. And Luminar Neo is their latest, greatest offering. I mean, I started off with Luminar 3, then Luminar AI, then Luminar 4. Maybe Luminar 4, then Luminar AI, but whichever. So I bought the three. And now Luminar Neo. And I pre-ordered the uh, portrait one that, they, that they're offering. And I forget the name of it already, but hey, yeah, I bought that one too. Because that's what I do more portraiture than anything else. Anyhow, why do I like it? Because it's full of AI. It does a lot of stuff for me. This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. Because it's better at it than I am. Well, let's just say that, to be honest, right? But the great thing about it is it's, it's got lots of templates, you know, for various things that are free. You could buy more templates if you want to. And the great thing about templates is it, it presets a lot of stuff for you, and you can just use the sliders to tweak a little bit here and there to make it your own, so to speak. So anyhow, that's the cool thing about it. But it also, because of that AI, it, it's, it speeds up your workflow a little bit. Like, let's say... Um, Let's say you're, you're down at the beach taking some photos of some hotties with the surfboards. And then you get home, you make sure the wife's not around, you pull up those hotties on your monitor here, and turns out they weren't quite as hotty as you thought they were. <laughs> Eyesight's going a little, going a little bonkers. So, um, but you also notice in the background, you see some birds flying around. 
but you also notice these spots. Are those seagulls or are those spots? I'm not sure. Maybe they're spots. But if you go into the software under erase, you can find some buttons. One's called spot and dust removal. And what it'll do is it will analyze that photo and it will tell the difference between a flock of seagulls birds. It will tell the difference between the birds and the spots. And it will remove the spots Yay! and leave the seagulls alone. Not pretty intelligent, right? It's artificially intelligent, but pretty intelligent. Um, it also has underneath that in the erase uh, field, it also has power line removal. Similar type of thing. You're out there taking some shots of some cool old buildings and you find one and you know, wow, this will look great over my fireplace. You get it home, pull it up on your monitor, and then you realize, wow, you were totally standing in the wrong spot and there's this power lines all over the freaking picture. Ruins everything. <laughs> Click on power line removal and it will analyze your photo and remove for the most part, those power lines for you. Yay! Uh, nothing's perfect. You talking to me? But it may, you know, may need a little clean up here and there because if the building has lines and things on it, you know, it, it may not, uh, it may confuse the power line with the line in the building. And you may have to remove it yourself. But it's better than removing, you know, 20 lines all by yourself, brushing out, brushing out this and that. Anyhow, so that's a cool feature. Also has uh, things like scenery lighting. You know, you have the light coming from one side and you think it might look a little better if it was a little further this way. You can subtly shift the light over this way. Um, it has masking AI. You know, if you want to mask things, it'll, it'll figure out what you want masked all at once instead of you, again, brushing out a lot of the different things. Um, background removal. Sky replacement, which is nothing special. Other software has sky replacement, but it still has it, you know, in, in that regard. Um, and a bunch of other stuff. I mean, go through the whole laundry list. It's economical. It's another good reason for, uh, for considering this. Cheap bastard. It's a, it's a plug and play. You can plug it into Lightroom or the others and it plays well with them. I use it as a standalone because I think it's a pretty powerful package by itself. So it's worth it. And if you want to get yourself a copy, click on the link in the description below. It'll take you to Skylum and it will reduce your price by $10, right? Who doesn't want to save $10? And what does it do with that $10? Talk, talk it up, man. They give it to me, right? So I can do that with the $10. Um, so that's a, that's a pretty good deal right there, right? Hey, it's 10 bucks is 10 bucks, right? So other than that, um, they're also located in Ukraine. So they're producing this software, putting out updates all the time, fixing bugs and everything else while Mr. Putin's bombing them and doing all other kinds of stuff. So <laughs> kudos to them to keep up the good work while that's all happening. So it's also supporting them too. Other than that, um, well, how about you help support our channel, right? Get us exposed. <gasps> Out there in the world, on YouTube world anyway, and you subscribe. But I'm left-handed, so let's, you subscribe. And if we use left and right at twice, twice the power, subscribe. That's right, subscribe. Tell your mother, tell your father. Yay! Ooh, and maybe some second or third cousins. Tell them all to subscribe. Everybody can help Dr. Scott and Dylan. Do, do their thing and uh, get exposed out there. So anyway, what else does YouTube like besides subscribers?
besides that, they like that too. They like the thumbs up, right? And if you give us a thumbs up, I'll give you a little taste of Dylan's girlfriends, the thumbs up girls. Because they have a little song that goes something like this. Thumbs up. Do 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 thumbs up. Now, of course they sing it better than I do and I don't know the name of their group or the name of the song. But hey, they're pretty cute, yeah? That's why Dylan's got the hots for that blonde in the front. Shut up, you big fucking asshole. So anyway. So come on back next week. Why is that? Because you belong here. That's right, you belong here. And where is here? Who are we? Well, I'm Dr. Scott. He's Dylan. <laughs> Obviously busy with mommy, so he's not gonna come in and do his usual little bit with the show, so forget him. Um, so I'm Dr. Scott, he's Dylan. I'm Batman. I'm Spartacus! Bond. And together, we're all collectively modesty photography. We're here to talk about tips and tricks about photography, vintage lenses, vintage cameras, camera systems, uh, camera accessories, microphones, tripods, adapters, filters, you name it, we can talk about it. That kind of cringe level where your sphincter pucker is kind of horrible. Yeah, I think I made that abundantly clear. Thanks. Um, but you got to come back next week, but don't forget to subscribe and thumbs up too, right? So come back next week. We try to do one of these every Friday. So that's Friday, obviously Vietnam time. If anybody knows about where we are here, we're in Vietnam. So that could be the day before you, the day after you, or maybe even the same day as you, depending geographically where you are in the world and what kind of funky time zone you're in. Thank you for dropping by. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for the support. Thank you for telling your mom about us. Don't tell on us, but tell your mom about us. That woman, my ass! Because it's all about you. That's right. And what was the name of the show? Well, this was Camera Talk with Dr. Scott and his little co-host, Dylan, who's absent today. Probably for the better. It makes the videos faster. Anyhow, so again, thanks for dropping by. Thanks for everything. Thanks for just being you. And uh, I guess we'll see you in the next video, right? Okay. I guess you're free to go then. All right. Bye bye. Here I am. Here I am.